Welcome back to Instant Let Left Nut Live. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Left sack. They're left. Left sacks. sack. You're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I went. I went. I went uh, too deep. So last episode, I brought up PetSmart and my my time there, my tenure, and how that's sort of a calming place for me. I have some wonderful memories of my time working at PetSmart, and of course, that's where I met Rachel, and you know, she is now my wife, <laughs> and. Um, She's not an animal. She's not an animal, no. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't meet her in the fish tanks. Um, but uh, we, you know, we started hanging out one evening after um, when a bunch of us from, from work were going to hang out. And she came and tagged along, even though we didn't really know her. She was going to meet us, and, and she did. And it, you know, obviously changed my life. So I owe a lot to PetSmart. And I have a lot of long-term friends from PetSmart as well. Um so, you know, it's it's pretty cool, like, to have a place that it, it sucks working retail. Like, retail is terrible, but that has largely impacted my life and I can kind of look back on warmly. Um, we had this military macaw, which is a parrot that's, you know, like, a uh, foot and a half tall, two feet if you add her tail feathers. Um, and she was two when I started at PetSmart, or maybe just under... And she was, like, super mean. Like, you put your finger in the cage and she's chomping. And they have a bite powerful enough to just, you know, if not cut your finger off necessarily, but they could easily just crush the bones in your finger and break your finger, you know, snap it. Mm. Um, and you would be bleeding. <laughs> so, oh, you know, a mean bird. And I was working retail and I didn't want to, like, you know stock shelves and run the register and stupid stuff like yeah. that. So I made every excuse I could to spend time with this, like, freaking dangerous bird. <laughs> <laughs> and after a week or two, man, Lucy loved me. That's uh, awesome. It, it was, and she changed her disposition for just about everyone because of the work I did with her, too. So, like, I felt a lot of pride in that, and I, I loved that bird. I came so close to wanting to try to, like, make it work where I could afford her, but on a PetSmart, you know, employee salary, there's just no way. Um, and, uh, and she ultimately, you know, she grew to be much nicer. People could pet her on the head and everything, and we there was this guy um, who came in the store to see her all the time, and we found out that she was going to be moved to another store, so he went ahead and bought her. Oh, nice. Um... And uh, I got to even go see her years after having left PetSmart. I, I probably should schedule a trip and go do it again sometime. But years after having left PetSmart, I can still go see her. And she has white cheeks because she's a military macaw. And they turn red as soon as she sees me because she instantly remembers me. It's like a two-year-old that's like happy to see their uncle or something, you know? It's so great. That's awesome. <laughs> and so, yeah, no matter how much time passes between visits... She turns bright red, her feathers fluff up on her head, and she comes over to me and puts her head down, so I'll scratch her head, which is a display of trust. It was it was super cool, and it was like a very like transformative time for me to realize like you know, animals aren't born bad kind of thing, right? Like they mm. it's treatment and all how you treat them. People were afraid of her at PetSmart. Not everyone, I mean like my manager and, and uh, still good friend, she was good with her. But that was just one person. She needed more attention than she was getting, you know? So I, I used a lot of pet smart time to give her that attention. Yeah. So it's not that anyone was mean to her. They just didn't give her enough attention. Yeah. Uh, um, ooh, and honestly, yeah. a bird like that, that smart and that big, doesn't belong in a store like that. And <laughs> pet smart has changed their policy. They don't carry birds like that anymore. Uh, yeah. Um, which is good. So, <clears throat> um, some other stories, though. <laughs> oh, what time are we at, real quick? Uh, right? Five minutes. Okay. Well, six minutes, actually. I'm jumping left. in, then. Oh, um, okay, yeah. I've been, I've been trying to uh, improve my relationship with your cat, Drella. <laughs> Slowly but surely. She's, she's, she's getting, getting better. Me, yeah. yeah, she's getting better. She's our feral that just doesn't want to be touched, you know, out of all of the cats we have, which is very many. Oh. <laughs> I love these guys. <laughs> but the animations on this game yeah. are my favorite part. Oh, man, so many of them. It's funny because I said these guys and I meant the animators, not the creatures. I had no idea there were going to be multiple creatures on there. I thought you meant like all the bosses in general. No, no. Um, I love the animations. Um, but anyhow, um, Drella is is, our, is one of our other cats and she's just not interested in being picked up or held. Except for on the like super rare occasion that she wants to be. 
Um, when it happens, it's just like, uh, who could guess, you know? <laughs> like, um, but, so less, less happy stories of PetSmart. We had a rat escape once. And this rat got into the walls, and we believe either mated with other escaped rats or wild rats. We're not sure. Mm. But catching her was a, a Herculean task. Um, the first time she got caught was in a glue trap. And during cutting her out of the glue trap, she bit the manager who was cutting her out of the trap. And he dropped her, and she ran off with a piece of the trap still attached to her. Um, and he, he was bleeding, so he couldn't deal with it, you know? Yeah. Um, she survived for a while in the walls again. Um, occasionally coming out and darting under the, like, the steel to, like, grab, like, bits of dog kibble and things like that. And, um, then we caught her with a, um, a fishnet that would be used for, like, ponds, like when we were selling for ponds. <laughs> and, and managed to get her and got her in a cage in a back room where we kept anything we had to quarantine. But basically what we don't sell and what we don't put with stuff we're gonna sell... They had a sick room, they called it, but really it was just quarantine. It wasn't actually just for sick animals. Um, but she was in the quarantine room, and she totally busted her lid and got out again. So this is three escapes that this freaking rat has on her, on her belt. Um, so we catch her another time. I can't remember how she was caught again, but we catch her, and they have her back there in the room. And what we did was we took someone, and someone was in college, a lot of us were, um, and had a bunch of textbooks, and they put all the... <laughs> Joe, you just rode that up to your death. I wanted to see how high it would go. Um, well, surely that, that spinning thing in the de top isn't going to kill me. Yeah, surely. Oh. oh. Um, so... <clears throat> Jeez, this is tough. Gotta try to get the big bosses. Yeah, steam, all three of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's nice, one. there's one. Okay. Uh, anyhow. Ooh. Oh, I text. thought he was going to die. That would have been better. <laughs> so, oh. textbooks on top of the cage. This happens twice that somebody forgets to put the textbooks on and she gets out again. Um, so she's out. She's on the run. But, oh, I'm sorry. Between those events, she gives birth. And we have um, three of, like, these terribly mean... Uh, I say three. I think it's probably more than three, actually. Uh terribly mean, feral rats, um, like, raised by their mother in the short time she was with them, I guess, to become, like, vicious. Mm, yeah. And, um, so handling them, they're, like, snapping at you and stuff, like, we don't know if their parent was a wild rat, and, you know, the one parent, rather, and the other one just kind of went wild, or what happened, um... But they end up getting out as well. <laughs> like, just the most ridiculous comedy of errors. Um, and so now all of these rats are out in the store, and they just kind of become part of our store life. Like, we can't keep them, like, held. Like, they're too fast, they're too dangerous, people keep getting bitten if you try to grab them. So, like, get them in the net if you can get them, but we can't... Like, like everyone has sort of... Uh, um, resigned to them being part of the store, I guess. Right. Um, so, um, <laughs> this is not funny. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because I'm trying to figure out how to tell it. <sighs> One day, much later on, we've kind of, you know, come to accept all of the weirdness of PetSmart. We start having an issue with our birds, which we start calling the bird flu, even though it has nothing to do with bird flu. Okay. Birds are literally losing their limbs. Whoa. Um, literally, legs of birds are falling off. Feathers are being torn out. Uh, well, I guess they're being dropped, I guess. And management is convinced that there's an actual illness, like there's a disease that's making this happening. Which seems crazy, but management is convinced. And that kind of circulates through the store, so everybody's like, yeah, no, they say it must be some disease. Huh. So we're like, bird leprosy? <laughs> like, what? what is going on? Until I'm working the register one morning, 
I hear one of my good close friends scream her lungs out and come running out of the back room, calling me. Nick, 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 come here, come here, come here. And I go in there and I see what I can only describe as like a serial killer's like perfect tableau, like where they've murdered someone and made that art. Because there is a bird with its wings outspread at its side in an almost angelic pose. Head to the left, kind of like, you know, eagle on the dollar or whatever. Well, wherever. Whatever point. <laughs> Quarter. <laughs> um, e eagle. <laughs> that we know. On a state symbol. Um, <laughs> that's terrible. I can't think of what an eagle's on. But anyhow. Um, head turned, wings out. And everything below what you would consider to be torso. That kind of abdomen region is just guts hanging through a wireframe cage. Like, oh, literal, gosh. like, just hanging That's there. Terrible, yeah. And what we found out was happening, she walked in on the mother rat, who was crawling under the bird cages, which are wireframe bottoms so the poop can fall through to the newspaper, okay. grabbing their feet and biting and yanking out their legs. And this one managed to get... This time she managed to get more than just a leg... And she pulled a whole bird down and was pulling its guts out through the bottom of the cage. Whoa. And it died that way, frozen with its wings out and head turned in this grisly pose. That is terrifying. It's terrifying and awful. And uh, I had to clean it up. <laughs> um, so then it became like a serious hunt to get this rat one of the managers which i you know i shouldn't say a lot of this probably but i don't work for PetSmart anymore um one of the managers came in with a bb gun and a six pack of beer three hours before oh, opening and was trying to classy. kill it yeah right um i mean none of this was like agreed on he just did it um they also uh <clears throat> and i've gone way over on the episode but i'm gonna try to wrap this up well, i've got um, one left here let's see like yeah the sort out how to kill it. Yeah, that's true. Boss episodes kind of make up for long episodes, so this works out. Um, they ended up managing to uh, to get her. Oh, she... Um, one of the managers walked into the back room and the rat was up on top of the uh, the shelf of cages trying to get another meal after we, we had moved everything out of there and it was just, like, sniffing around for, you know, whatever. Sure. Um, and it literally leapt off of the top of the cage rack at our manager. She, well, you know, I, I was going to say so she claims. There's no reason not to believe her. This thing was crazy. It was super aggressive by this point, and hungry, I'm sure, by that point, because we took cut off its food supply. It literally leapt off of this thing at her. Um, so we, we finally managed to catch this thing and locked it up in a box. <laughs> and there was this one girl who was studying to be a vet and the manager had called up a local vet because we didn't have a vet in store at this location. Um, they called up a local vet and they were like, hey, we have this extremely feral rat that needs to be put down. It's dangerous. How much is it going to cost to get it put down? And they gave her a price that was just obscene. Like, there's no reason to give a price like that. And this girl who was studying to be a vet and was like every like bubbly cheerleader you can imagine, like, uh -huh, it'll be fine. She's like... Just give it to me, and I'll take a burlap sack and a can of Raid, and I'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, oh, my God. Who are you? <laughs> like, what is this? Was she played by Woody Harrelson? Uh, no. She was oh, a cute, so bubbly little girl, ready to murder this rat, though, because we had had so much history with it by that point mm. that she just went very dark very fast. Yeah. And uh, what ended up happening, ultimately, was that we took the rat into the wild. Well, I didn't. The manager did took the rat into the wild and released it in the woods somewhere and just never looked back, you know. Um, so PetSmart did not put down that animal. But um, it's some pretty crazy stuff. It's, whoa, I don't know how you didn't die from the flying maggot. I think I jumped right at the last, oh, those maggots also? Those yeah, maggots? they're shooting out little baby oh, maggots. It's easier to kill this guy at the start. <laughs> Let me run into this saw blade because it's easier to kill him. Oh, it is. Yeah, sure. All right, how many more times do you get to try this before we cut? I don't know, it's just, it's so hard to get them to do the right jump from the right spot. Yeah. Gotta... Yeah. Why don't you die the way I want you to? <laughs> <laughs> but what are these things? Because they're kind of blue. Are they like made they're of? They're giant ash? maggots. Oh, oh, what are they? Oh, I, I don't see, know. I guess maggots could be it. That would make sense, right? I was just thinking they were giant maggots. Yeah. Um, but I, I saw them and I was thinking like ash snowmen. 
Uh, yeah, the first time I saw it, I thought it was a snowman, but no, I mean, they're definitely no, worm-like. There's no doubt about it being worm-like. How do you feel about this boss being compared to the one boss that you said was super memorization boss? Well, this isn't memorization at all. This is I know. Like, this is great. This is. You do think I'm, so? Because really... I think it's kind of like, just, you have to get lucky, and that bugs me. I don't think so, because it requires, you have to, I mean, you have to wait for the right moment, uh -huh. but you're actively guiding them. Uh, hmm. to, to the spike. To the, it feels like I, I'm finally being active as Meat Boy, uh, as opposed to just surviving passively in the environment. Maybe just because I'm passive watching. Uh, yeah. But it feels very much like, I hope they go to the right place this time. Nope, they didn't. Let me try well, again. I mean, so, like, I can, but like, they'll move through the air. So if I can, but they have to jump from far enough away. Uh huh. Um. Um. I find a sweet spot. Yeah. I. I don't know. Watching it makes it feel less in control. Like you're just waiting for the moment. Well, I mean, that's oh, oh careful. Oh, shit. oh god. Yeah. yeah, there it is. All right. Well, we'll have to try again next time on Instant Replay Live. Joe, do you have any final parting words? Um. <laughs> Good job, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> Really kick it. Kick Yo, it. plans, free stroke, Sonic Golf. Sonic Golf.